And welcome back. During this year's November celebration of Veterans Day, it's important to recognize the often overlooked difficulties our veterans encounter, such as limited access to nourishing meals. The Food Bank of New York City is actually contributing and remaining committed to the assisting the families, as well as the service members, and also providing much needed assistance. Joining me now at the warehouse, or I should say is the warehouse professional at Food Bank for New York City. We're pleased to have Quadro Bland, and he's with us. And uh, Quadro, good to have you. No, more. thank you for having me. No, really, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to thank you because uh, you have uh, been a serviceman, three tours uh, over in Iraq. And so first and foremost, I want to thank you for your service uh, to the country. Roger that, roger that. Thank you. No, and uh, talk to me about why did you decide even to want to serve in the military? Uh, first of all, um, in school, I remember something that John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. That pretty much stuck with me. I'm also from a military family, my grandfather, my father, and I chose the Army because the Army is the best branch. You know, not just because, you know, everybody else in my family was, but, you know, I like the Army politics, the character, and the way they do things, the camaraderie, and things of that nature, though. So the military was just a way to give back to what this country's done for us. And I mean, I know we have a history and everything. Everybody says this and that about the United States, but I don't see anybody leaving it. Anybody's still here. Yeah. So, you know, I just love it. That's all. As we say around the way, facts. Now, let me talk to you about uh, where we are right now, because you have, you go out, you serve your country, you're involved in war, and in many ways, you deserve a hero's welcome. But the reality is, is when many veterans come back, they don't necessarily get that welcome. And sometimes they're almost a foreigner in their own country. Right. And when we talk about this thing called like food insecurity, it blows my mind to be a veteran and still have to worry about just the basic necessities of food. Right. I mean, it's just a sad situation, everything, because um, when, when you're in the military, you get ready to transition to the civilian world. They have um, this thing called ACAP, and it prepares you to you know, readjust simply on um, civilian life. Now, I can't speak for every veteran. You have some veterans that are strong, some veterans that are weak. You know, it could be for mental illness or, you know, families that, you know, the marriage broke up or anything of that nature. But, you know, you just got to go out there and try. You know, sometimes when people tell me no, that just gives me strength. Like, okay, yeah, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So it's sad, uh, you know, with the reception. A lot of people don't, you know, approve of the things that we've done over there. And they look down upon us, you know, just like, you know, same thing when my dad came back from Vietnam, you know, baby killers, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, hunger is always a situation. You just got to really, really try to put forth the effort. Look at your resources, call your local VA, even your DAV. You know, there's always ways to open doors. Every door has a key. You just got to get it. You just got to get out there and strive for it. Yeah. So for yourself, talk to me about the work that you're doing here at Food Bank and really trying to bridge the gap of food insecurity, particularly for veterans like like your brothers and sisters, I should say. Oh, you talking about my position here at Food Bank? Yeah. Is that what I do? Um, mm -hmm. basically I'm a warehouse professional. Um, my job pretty much is palletizing pallets for the next day's shipment. Everything that we pick today is being shipped out for tomorrow. Depending on what the agencies require, you know, um, certain things that you might need, you know, their dairy products, the dry products, your meats, um, refrigerated items, fruits, vegetables, produce. And we even carry stuff such as um, for, for um, new mothers, babies, um, baby uh, diapers, and, you know, baby products, female products, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Everything goes on here at Food Bank. Food Bank, I don't really consider it a job. It's more like a career to me. It's a second career. You know, I love it here. It's beautiful. And plus, yeah. you know, as a native New Yorker, I'm still giving back. Man, you're still serving. And I mean, still serving. Still big, serving bro. Big, shout, big shout out to you. When you look at the work that's being done for yourself and really delivering into the lives of veterans and other people, um, what's that impact like on the other side when you have actually delivered unto other people? Talk to me about the impact. Oh, man, man. It's, it's, it's just, I, I can't even really express it, man. Even right now, just like, you know, even the question you just asked me made me think back on the situation when we pulled up this, at this one agency, the line was long, people, you know, just cheering us as we was pulling up and everything, you know. It's just, it's, it's an overwhelming feeling, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a beautiful feeling. It's just, I don't know, it's a vibe that, you know, you're doing something, you know, rather than, you know, these people out there trying to feed their kids, wondering where it's going to come from, where, you know, and here we are right here, you know, no questions asked, you know, 
just, we just ask you to be there and pick up the food and, you know, see you tomorrow. Yeah. And so for yourself as a veteran, do you feel as though uh, the services are really out there to really help you to, you know, get back in? I mean, we're living in wartime right now. See what's going on in Israel, Palestine, uh, what's going on in Africa, uh, the right. genocide. We're living in some real treacherous times. But for the people yes, who are out there in the service arena uh, to be able to have their needs met, talk to me about that. I mean, uh, how do you feel about that right now? What's what's needed? I mean, it hurts to be honest with you. Though. I mean, I, I can't, I can't really speak too much on the political side of everything. But you know, we all had to come to the realization, like you know, enough is enough. You know, this planet is big enough for everybody. You know, we just got to learn to share. We all had the same borders. We might not agree on certain things, but it's always a negotiation table to come down and sit down and talk. But we all need to eat. We all need nourishment. We all need our resources, shelter, clothing. You know, we just got to put aside our differences and just realize that. And hopefully this younger generation, they can evolve to understand that because that way it will carry over to their generation when they have children. So, you know, it's, at some point this just really has to stop, though. But it's a hurtful situation what's going on over there in the Middle East. You know, it's hurtful, very hurtful. Yeah. And so as we look at food insecurity, I mean, obviously, does it ever astound you? Uh, I mean, working right there, you know, front and center, does it ever astound you that we're in New York and the amount of people that really – are hungry and desperate for food in the city that never sleeps um there's always somebody that's hungry always it's always somebody that's hungry. even though when you transit back and forth to work and everything um you know i take the train and everything and somebody always has the hand out um I, if i have something on me i'll get back to them or i might just refer them to go to um this pantry or this church you know these people will help you but sadly some people don't want that advice. You know what I mean? They, they're looking for a little something, something on the side or, you know, something to ease that pain, you know, or suffering from that hunger that they own, that they're currently having at the moment. But, you know, I don't judge, you know, if I give you some money, you know, I'm telling you what to do with it, but, you know, it might even go buy a pack of cigarettes or a beer or something, but you just gotta, you know, within yourself, you just can't give up, you know? Right. I don't know if I really pretty much hit that, um, answer that question on the head though but no you 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 you, you hit it on the head you know right. I, I was reading somewhere about you and you were talking a little bit about your work and you worked in, in the military police in the in, right. in in the in the service and it's kind of like you find some of the similar things in what you're doing right now uh in the area of just service talk to me about that before we go well, I mean, I follow God's direction and everything because um, when I first went into the Army and everything, I wasn't planning on becoming a military police officer. I wanted to get into communications. But, you know, being a police officer and everything, that opened up a new idea on what to do and another way to always help the community and stuff. I've always been a, a person that doesn't think about himself, you know. I rather Because I know what it's like to suffer. I've been in that situation before. When I got out of the military and I came back to New York, guess what? It's at the height of the COVID uh, epidemic. And I fell into a situation. So trust me, everything that I know that's going on out there, I've experienced firsthand, and I just want to get back. Just like I said before, everything that we do right here at Food Bay, where we palletize our pallets, it's, it's like, uh, oh, it's, it's a crazy feeling. Even right now, I'm feeling little bubbles inside and everything. I want to tear up a little bit, but I get emotional when I do stuff like this. It's just it's just a warm feeling. Yeah. You know? Well, I want to let you know, I mean, we really appreciate the work that you've done serving our community, serving our community in food deserts, but more importantly, serving our nation and the work that you put in. And sometimes right. uh, you don't get the thank you. Sometimes you don't get the appreciation. Um, you didn't get, you know, you didn't make the choice to go over there. You were sent over there. Yeah, and, I was sent <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you followed orders and you did what you did and you served your nation. And we want to say thank you. And again, thank you for serving this community. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have you here with us today, Quadro. So uh, keep up the great work, brother. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. All right. Quadro Bland is our guest here, and he is also uh, the warehouse professional at Food Bank for New York City. I want to encourage you, if you want more information about Food Bank, do me a favor. Go to their website, foodbanknyc.org, and then also follow them on social media, Food Bank for NYC. Uh, we're encouraging don't go anywhere. We do have more show coming up. Uh, stay with us. Open continues right after this.